All right, I've started the recording, so Sasha, you don't need to worry about this. Hi, Jeremy, how are you doing? I am doing great. How about you? I am also doing great. I am feeling replenished after this lunch break, and I am happy to go back for four more hours of conferences. Me uh, too. Let me just yeah, great. Let me just put up the questions. So Jeremy is going to read the questions, I'll answer them, and I will be doing jazz hands in the background or provide any bits of information I may, considering that Orgrim has been mentioned during the presentation, and everyone's going to want to ask me. Um, uh, so I'm looking at Jeremy. Yeah, uh, go. Cool. I'm looking at the, uh, do you think the line numbers for writing documents is kind of a distraction, especially for notes? Um, no, uh, I do software development and that left like fringe is kind of invisible, but I do like to use jump to line. So I just bind that to con uh, control L and it's helpful to just see that. Um, so I, I, no, I haven't, I haven't noticed that. Um, there are other ways to jump around in Emacs, but I like to have many different ways. So, um, yeah. Then, how do you manage private and public data with your Zettelkasten? One of my blockers on putting my Zettelkasten on the web is I don't want everything to be public, especially fleeting notes. So, one thing is I only explicitly export a file to Hugo. And I have that, I can like I can export this. That doesn't show up very well. Um, so it's export, probably export org to take on rules, and it will export the buffer. And then any note that I reference, like these are all links, any notes that are not public will be exported as the text, but there won't be a link to it. So it's it's having the very deliberate, this is going up. Um, and so I send it over into Hugo, um, which is its own repository, and either massage it there or whatnot. <clears throat> that Any further questions on that one? I don't think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> Is there anything special you're using from org to Hugo Markdown? This looks like a really nice setup. I like to give it a try. Um, yes, there. I have a bespoke build process. Um, having started in WordPress, working through Jekyll, going to Hugo, and then switching from Markdown to org mode, I've backed into this private public Zettelkasten, which is really nice, and. I have added quite a bit of code. There's my dog um, in my blogging. So I have how do I export like side notes? Because I want, I have marginalia instead of like the footnotes, but I still use org mode footnotes. And so I've got a bunch of these things. And this is all available up on GitHub, and I'll provide a link in the in the document. Um, yeah, so that there's a there's quite a bit of making the export work how I want it, um, and I've been uh, kind of fiddling with also improving like LaTeX or PDF export. So, um, so yeah, I I've have a long running to do item to like fully lay out my my bespoke build process because once it gets to Hugo, there's also additional work that I do to compile um, what is kind of a purse uh, like a digital garden um, ish, but it's really a blog focused one. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's at Jeremy F on GitHub at dot Emacs and You'll be looking for jfblogging.l that has some of this. Also, uh, jforgmode.l will have some of that. Um, yeah, I want to I want to circle back to um, that. Anything to prevent private links from getting accidentally being made publicly accessible? Yes. Um, 
So previous to using Denote, I also used OrgRome. So I have this idea of a node in OrgRome has um, Rome refs. And OrgRome is much more robust about that. So anytime you mention a ref, it will it will count it as a backlink. So for example, if my node was my blog, take on rules, anytime anywhere in my uh, org, org Rome repository, I mentioned take on rules.com, it would treat it as a backlink. So from that Rome refs, I have a, um, I will, interrogate, and this is not the function for it, I will look at the node to see, does it have a Rome ref? And if it does, I will treat it as a public link. So I, I don't, I haven't bled out any um, private information because again, going back to, I only publish a document and the document I'm explicitly doing so. And then my process filters out any links that do not have public URLs it will just dump it in there as maybe a span with a ref class of it so that I can kind of know that that came from there. Um, yes, so the f font I am using um, is, so this is another font. And what font were you using in EWW? I think I'm using IOS Becca and um, ET Bembo. So let's. Okay, let's... show me your EWW. If we are doing full racing setup, I can recognize uh, Yosef K just by looking at it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, ET Bembo. I'm I'm using these two fonts as kind of my anchor. So the variable pitch is ET Bembo. Um, my blog started off with a Tufta style CSS, and I really pared it down and got rid of any of the um, additional fonts because I, they can be used as trackers. And I'm like, no, nope, you you decide what font you want for your browser. I don't need to tell you how what looks good for you. Um, yeah, so the story of take on rules, um, I have to thank my, my partner and lovely wife for that. She um, kind of nudged me to do some blogging and we spent some time thinking about it. And originally it started off as writing about rules for role-playing games or tabletop games. And it has extended far beyond that. The blog, as I've shifted, as I think I mentioned in the presentation, as I've shifted towards an everything and nothing approach, the blog is anything I wanna write about anymore. You'll, like there's haikus up there with some regularity. So the name is, now a a relic of a, a of a a past so yeah the thing and nothing um is and i put that in the about on my blog um so it's i i highly encourage like i feel great once i like said oh i don't have to write this towards a topical blog post or like what the topic is it freed it up and I know that it comes at a potential compromise because it's very much me being a voice up there um, instead of something that is curated and filtered through a specific channel. Like I could have a technical blog, but I decided I'm just gonna tag it as programming or Emacs and let you find it. And you can subscribe to the RSS feeds of each tag that you find applicable. Right. Thank you. So we are uh, we were at the last question on the pad, but I see that some people have joined us on the blue button. So hi everyone. Uh, we have about six minutes until we need to go to the next talk. But if anyone has a question on the blue button, uh, I'm thinking about James, who's joined us and who was kind enough to dro drop a thank you line on the blue button. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask a question, maybe? Not putting pressure, by the way. Don't feel like you need to, but it just... <laughs> I, I speak all the time, otherwise I'm very happy to spend time with our speakers, you know, but, uh, you know, EmacsConf, it's about, as, as Sasha told you during the intro, it's about making people take things, brilliant things out of their mind and put them 
outside in the public. And for us, you know, we get to see the talk evolve, we talk with people. So for us, we are already quite cognizant of the topic. And it, the point is not for us host to ask questions. It's mostly for you to ask questions. And then we worry about all the fancy stuff in the background. Otherwise, you damn well know I will ask questions about uh, Org Roam, about links and nodes in general, because that's my bread and butter. Yeah, it's. I, I should add, like the process of migrating the data um, from a WordPress export to Markdown to Org mode um, by way of Pandoc was. Um, it was really insightful to help me understand how I want the the data to flow and how I could create a a repository for me of information and one that I could then send out into the world the public information having to worry about the private things that I might want to keep. Um, so it, it was that process of just working through it to reflect on how I'm writing um, and what I started using writing for. Um, I think, you know, Richard Feynman said, no, writing is my thinking. What I wrote is thinking. So it, it has helped to really frame that. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, there's an interesting um, ambivalent relationship because it feels like writing helps thinking and thinking helps writing in a way. And nowhere have I personally been more aware of this than when coming up with networks of notes because it really, I mean, you, you use whichever word you want, you know, a second brain, a collection of notes, a slip box, a repository of notes, whichever the tool you use, the point at the end is to resonate with you. It's kind of like extending those moments of consciousness that you have when you take your notes and you make the entire gradient available. Sorry, I got Sasha whispering in my ear sometimes. <laughs> it's really pleasant, yeah. but it's really, it's really shocking. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Aaron, you had a question. Do I use Denote just for my blogs or do I use it for other purposes? Um, I use Denote for all of my note taking and almost, I think it's exclusively org mode that I, that I use it in. But what I really appreciated in the consideration that Prot put forward was the file name encodes the information that's relevant. So it has helped me be able to query by using things like rip grep, well, not rip grab tree or um, I forget anymore what I use, um, but having that that the file encodes useful information and it's so much more relevant when I look at having worked at a university that rolled out Google Drive to everyone without any guidance on how to organize stuff. And I worked at a library and it was just a nightmare watching things show up where you could never find it again. So file name, um, the file name, having the date, having the, the title and having tags just made so much sense to be findable. Um, and yeah, I, I really do just use org, but if I am, going to make txt files or other files i have started adopting that structure and format so right well jeremy we have about one minute and 30 seconds left until we go on to the next talk uh, do you have any final words regarding your presentation or maybe where people can find you i know you've already mentioned this but yeah uh take on rules i'm also on dice camp dice.campmastodon uh, at take on rules. And I've thought about emacs.h, but we federate well. So uh, I appreciate that. Um, plas I, and I can stay on and answer any further questions if folks have it. Sure. So, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I confused myself with the buttons talking to production and all. Uh, well, then what I'm going to do is that the stream is going to move on to the next talk in about 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. If people want to join and ask any questions, uh, feel free to join on the blue button. The link is on the talk page or on IRC. 
And feel free to hang out as long as you want to ask as many questions as you want to Jeremy. We are recording all of this and we'll be publishing this later on once again. And all that's left for me to do is to thank you so much, Jeremy, for your presentation and your answers. Yeah. And I will see you another time. So yeah, uh, plasma strike. Yep. We're not. I'm not able to grant speaking powers. Uh, so if you wanted to type up something, question wise. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll manage this in the background. So we're moving on to, moving on to the next talk. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll figure out the things about BBB. But in the meantime, uh, enjoy the next talk. Yep. Bye. All right, Jeremy. We are now on the next talk. Sorry about uh, having to manage yeah. multiple things at the same time. Great. Speaking rights. I will try fixing this in the background. I need to get moving for the next mm -hmm. talk, but I'll do this in the background. And we'll let you know as soon as it's ready. Okay. All right. Bye-bye, Jeremy. All right. Bye.